There is a secret war brewing against Russia, a secret war that goes back decades. I'm sure you must have by now heard about the deadly attack that unfolded in Moscow on Friday. ISIS claims it had a hand in the attack. The U.S. says they warned Moscow about it. Why did Russia ignore the U.S. warning? Did the Ukraine war lead Russia to neglect the Islamist threat? What kind of Islamist threat does Russia face? There are plenty of questions, answers, few and complicated. What this incident does expose is the secret war brewing against Russia. But before I tell you all about that, here's what you should know about how the attack unfolded on Friday. Four men armed with Kalashnikovs arrived at the Crocus City Hall at around 7.40 p.m. in a minivan. Crocus City Hall is located on the outskirts of Moscow, some 20 kilometers from the Kremlin. It was about to host a concert by the rock group Picnic when the attack happened. The four gunmen walked calmly towards the metal detectors at the City Hall, firing their automatic weapons point blank in short bursts at terrified civilians. Videos showed people rushing for the exits as repeated gunfire echoed over the screens. <laughs> The attackers walked through the concert hall, aiming and then firing at the civilians. Some witnesses said the gunmen poured some sort of liquid on the seating and curtains in several places before igniting them. Later, flames engulfed the facade while glass on the top two floors of the seven-story building blew out. Russia's investigative committee confirmed that the gunmen used a flammable liquid to set fire to the concert hall's premises. Helicopters had to be brought in to drop about 160 tons of water, but it took some 10 hours for the fire to be contained. The attack lasted about 20 minutes. 137 people were killed, 182 more were injured. While many died from bullet wounds, some died due to smoke inhalation. Picnic's band members themselves were unharmed. It appears that those who carried out the attack had managed to escape the inferno and the mayhem they left behind. Immediately, Russia launched a manhunt. The Russian MP, Alexander Kinchatin said that the attackers fled in a white Renault car. According to him, police tried to stop the vehicle in the Bryansk region, about 340 kilometers from Moscow, managing to arrest two people as the others fled, some 14 hours after the first reports of shooting. Russia's Federal Security Service, FSB, announced 11 people had been arrested, including four directly involved. The next day, they were dragged into a court in Moscow where they were identified as Dalerzon Mirzoyev, Saida Krami Morodali, 
رچب علی زودہ شمس الدین فاردونی اینڈ محمد صبیر فیضوف دی شوڈ سائنس آف سویئر بیٹنگس ون اپیئر ٹو بی بیئرلی کانشیس وائل انادر ون ہیڈ ہیولی بینڈیجڈ ایئر آل ور چارجڈ ود این ایکٹ آف ٹیررزم اینڈ پروبیبلی فیس لائف ان پرزن رشیا اسٹیٹ نیوز ایجنسی سیڈ آل فور ور فرام تجیکستان The Russian president Vladimir Putin said that the four men intended to enter Ukraine and that some people on the Ukrainian side had been planning to facilitate their crossing from Russia. Ukraine, of course, rejected the charge. So the question is, who was responsible? The Islamic State has claimed hand in the attack. In fact, a day after the attack, ISIS released on its Telegram channels what it said is footage of the March 22nd attack. The nearly two-minute video shows a close-up view of one of the gunmen opening fire on several people as he enters what appears to be the concert hall. But Russian authorities have not commented on the ISIS claim. Interestingly, it comes at least two weeks after the US warned of a potential attack targeting large gatherings in Moscow. So did Russia ignore the U.S. warning? Russian officials say that the U.S. intelligence lacked specific detail. But the U.S. says that they had singled out Islamic State Khorasan, an offshoot which seeks to establish a Muslim caliphate across Afghanistan, Pakistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan and Iran. Why did Russia ignore the warning? What happened in Moscow, the death of hundreds of innocent civilians, raises particularly difficult questions for the Russian president, especially at a time of international tension and mistrust. The warning issued by Washington on the 7th of March was unusually specific and directed towards U.S. citizens. It talked about extremists with imminent plans to target large gatherings in Moscow. It specifically mentioned concerts. It advised Americans in Moscow to avoid large gatherings. Okay, the timings don't match, but the other details of the U.S. warning do. Washington did not just advise Americans in Moscow. Washington also communicated with the Russian government directly. A U.S. official said in a statement after the attack that the U.S. government shared this information with the Russian authorities in accordance with its long-standing duty to warn policy. So again, why did Russia ignore the warning? This brings me to another question. Why would the Islamic State attack Russia? It's not clear. In 2015, Putin changed the course of the Syrian civil war by intervening and supporting President Bashar al-Assad against the opposition and the Islamic State. Russia, along with the U.S. and Syrian forces, had played a major role in defeating Islamic State in Syria. Once driven out of Syria, the Islamic State fighters scattered and different branches emerged, including ISIS Khorasan. Counter-terrorism analysts say ISIS-K has been fixated on Russia for the past two years. They say that the ISIS-K accuses the Kremlin of having Muslim blood on its hands, referencing Moscow's intervention in Syria, Afghanistan and Chechnya. Let me explain how. You see, there are historical and ideological reasons for it. ISIS leaders have long seen attacks against distant targets as an integral part of their project. Such operations are aimed at not only terrorizing their enemies, but also mobilizing supporters and attracting new ones. In the past 18 months, ISIS has made a concerted effort to recruit from Central Asian countries through its Afghan branch, known as Islamic State Khorasan Province. Being Russian-speaking or even Russian nationals, these recruits can easily reach a target in Moscow, offering multiple new opportunities for attacks. In fact, analysts say that Russia has been in the crosshairs of ISIS for many years now. From 2016 to 2019, ISIS has carried out multiple attacks in Russia. In the recent years, Russia has thwarted many of their terror plots. ISIS leaders, like many Islamic militants, are mindful of Russian support for the regime of Bashar al-Assad in Syria. There is another reason. According to analysts, leaders of Islamic State Khorasan province may also see Russia as supportive of the continued rule of the Taliban in Afghanistan. 
Now, as you know, ISIS and Taliban are in conflict with each other. So ISIS will also remember Soviet military operations in Afghanistan in the 1980s and the jihad waged by their fathers or grandfathers against the Soviet forces. Let's not forget here, Russia's bloody war in Chechnya in 1999 may be a factor as well. In short, as far as Islamist groups are concerned, Putin's military interventions in Syria and Chechnya are no different from America's in Iraq or Libya. Nor is the presence of a large Russian military base in ex-Soviet country of Tajikistan, from where the arrested suspects are from. As far as Tajik militants are concerned, the presence of Russian military base in Tajikistan is not any less offensive to Islamist ideas than the presence of U.S. military bases in the Gulf. Uh, militants from Tajikistan, which has also suffered from a long-running extremist Islamist insurgency, have been linked to a series of recent ISIS attacks in Europe as well as Iran. Remember in January, about 100 died in a massive bombing at a commemoration ceremony in Iran. The Jeeks have also been involved in multiple other plots in Europe and Turkey over recent years. The Islamist threat to Russia, therefore, is much older than ISIS. Now, this is not to say that ISIS operation on Moscow did not get any assistance from foreign powers. Clearly, anti-Russia sentiments and tensions still persist in former Soviet countries. Could Russia's adversaries then have misused this anger against Russia? You never know. After all, isn't it an old saying, during times of war, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. To stay up to speed with the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.